why wouldn't they theorize a fake alien invasion? What is Blue Beam? Blue Beam is the idea that uh, they're going to fake an alien invasion to create the new world order. That, the, that by like creating a, a sort of shared enemy. He is worried about the possibility of aliens enslaving us. Project Bluebeam? Never heard of it? Well, that's exactly what the government wants. We're talking about a complex plan, allegedly by the United States government, NASA, and the United Nations, aimed at establishing a new world order by simulating a second coming of Christ or an alien invasion using advanced technology. And Joe Rogan just found all the answers. This theory was introduced by Sergei Manast, a Canadian investigative journalist in the mid-1990s. Let's take a closer look and unpack the idea that Sergei Manas brought into the limelight, known as Project Bluebeam. Eight to 10 feet tall, shadowy aliens, conspiracy theories, are saying a big creature could be seen standing in front of the entrance. The crew of the USS Omaha detected on multiple sensor systems unknown objects that surrounded the ship as it moved through ocean waters west of San Diego. Is that Jesus Christ? In the video, Pablo can be heard telling his family he thinks it's the second coming of Jesus. This notion is quite a handful, with its roots deeply embedded in conspiracy theories. It paints a picture of an elaborate scheme aimed at overhauling the way we see power dynamics and our belief systems on a worldwide scale. To make sure we're all on the same page, I'll break it down into simpler chunks and sprinkle in some extra details along the way. My goal is to make this easier to grasp for everyone. Sergei Manast was a Canadian journalist with a knack for diving into conspiracy theories. In the 1990s, he put a spotlight on something he called Project Bluebeam. According to Manast, this so-called project is a top secret plan cooked up by NASA and the United Nations. What's their end game? They supposedly want to kickstart a brand new religion with the Antichrist at its helm, setting the stage for a brand new world order. Sounds like something out of a sci-fi novel, right? Manas didn't stop there. He outlined four major steps that this project would supposedly take to dismantle the religious beliefs and national identities that people hold dear today. The ultimate goal, he said, was to lead everyone into a single unified government in a one world religion. Each of these steps, according to Manast, was meticulously designed to challenge and ultimately tear apart our current understanding and attachment to our religions and the countries we call home. He painted a scenario where the very fabric of society would be altered, pushing us towards a future where everyone is part of one government and follows one global religion. This theory, as wild as it may sound, suggests a future where differences are erased and a single narrative governs us all. Manas' theory, called Project Bluebeam, is about a big idea to change how the world works and what people believe. It suggests a future where everyone might think and live the same way. This theory is complex and wrapped in mystery, but the goal here is to explain it in simple steps for a better understanding. Imagine a plan to trick the whole world using high-tech gadgets. First up, they make fake earthquakes in different places. Why? To dig up stuff that looks old but isn't real. These fake finds are supposed to shock everyone by making them think what we know about religion is all wrong. It's like finding a hidden treasure that turns out to be a prank. Next, the trick moves to the skies. Picture a huge light show with lasers and 3D holograms making images of religious figures appear up above. Slowly, these figures merge into one, the Antichrist, leaving everyone watching totally stunned. This sky spectacle aims to shake up people's faith, suggesting all religions lead to one place, nudging everyone towards a new belief system. The third part gets even more personal. Imagine technology that can whisper voices directly into your head. 
making you think your gods are chatting with you. This sci-fi-like tech could mess with minds, using waves to mimic divine chats, chipping away at personal faith, and steering people towards a universal religion. The grand finale? Pretend aliens are invading. This stage drama would play out worldwide, making it seem like extraterrestrials are attacking us. The panic and fear from this fake invasion could push people to abandon their beliefs and identities, rallying together under a single global banner to face this made-up threat. The whole scenario, known as Project Bluebeam, mixes real and imagined tech to create global illusions. Critics brush us off as more of a sci-fi tale than reality, pointing out the lack of solid evidence and playing on fears of too smart tech and vast conspiracies. It taps into deep-seated concerns about privacy, the misuse of technology, and the extent of government control over our beliefs and thoughts. While Project Bluebeam might sound like a far-out theory, it opens up serious discussions about technology ethics and the balance of power in global affairs. It's a reminder to stay critical, demand proof, and consider the broad implications of technology's role in our lives and beliefs. Manas' ideas come from different places, including a made-up book against Jewish people called The Protocols of the Elders of Zion, and maybe even a Star Trek movie idea that was never made. He was really worried about how technology could be used in the wrong way to control people and change what societies believe in at their core. Even though his story is complex, called Project Bluebeam, there's no real proof to back it up, and it's mostly seen as a conspiracy theory. People who don't believe in it say it mixes possible future technology with big fears people have about society, making an interesting but baseless story. Manas died in 1996, but his ideas became popular online and influenced other people who believe in conspiracy theories. In a different event back in 1952, the U.S. had a lot of UFO sightings, making it a big year for these mysterious events. This was especially true in July during the two weekends, the 19th and the 20th, and then the 26th and the 27th. Something really unusual happened that got everyone talking, especially in Washington, D.C., the country's capital. It wasn't just rumors or unclear pictures. There were radar signals from Washington International Airport that showed unknown objects flying in the sky. Many different people reported seeing weird lights and objects in the sky, which made a lot of people curious and a bit worried. These weren't just a few stories from some people, but many sightings that were confirmed by several sources, like radar operators at airports and military places. The way these objects moved was odd, not like normal planes. They could change direction quickly and move really fast, faster than what was possible with the technology back then. Because all of this was happening over the capital, it got a lot of attention from the media. Journalists who had heard about the sightings from the week before were ready to report more about it. They went into Washington International Airport to try to find out what was causing the strange radar signals. The sightings went on for a long time, even into the early morning with radar operators still seeing the unknown objects at 2 or 3 a.m. Things got even more serious when Andrews Air Force Base, not far from Washington, D.C., got involved. After seeing the radar, they sent out two F-94 jet interceptors, which were special planes meant to check out these unknown objects. This showed that the military was really serious about finding out what was going on, more than just being curious. One of the pilots who went to look for the UFOs ended up seeing the strange lights himself. He said they didn't act like any plane he knew. Hearing this from a trained military pilot made the UFO sighting seem more believable and hard to just brush off as mistakes or pranks. People began to wonder and theorize about the origins of these objects, with guesses ranging widely from top secret military projects to spacecraft from other worlds. The flurry of activity and intrigue surrounding these sightings caught the attention of the U.S. government, prompting it to launch formal investigations aimed at uncovering the truth behind these mysterious appearances in the sky.
Even though the government tried really hard to figure out what was happening, the UFO sightings in Washington, D.C. back in 1952 are still a big mystery today. The government said that the weird radar readings during those times were because of something called temperature inversions. This is when the weather makes a radar think that things on the ground are flying in the air. But a lot of people didn't buy that explanation. They didn't think it made sense, especially since some very trustworthy people, like pilots and folks who work with radar, saw stuff with their own eyes that you couldn't just explain away as some weird weather thing. These sightings in 1952 didn't just stay within the walls of government buildings or among scientists. They really made a lot of regular people interested in UFOs, making them wonder if there's life out there in space and if maybe we've even been visited by beings from other planets. This event showed us that there are things out there that we don't always understand. And our current tech can't always give us the answers we're looking for. Even now, years later, people all over the world, whether they just like to think about these things or they study them seriously, are still really into what happened those weekends in July 1952. Watching these events unfold was like watching a surprise show in the sky over Washington, D.C. Unidentified objects were seen doing this sort of dance in the air, coming out of nowhere, filling the sky, and then suddenly they would just vanish, leaving people watching and those tracking them on the radar totally confused. President Harry Truman wanted answers fast. And people who saw these things, even those who were pretty high up in government, couldn't pretend they hadn't seen anything. The Air Force was under a lot of pressure from both the public and the media, and they found themselves backed into a corner. This led to a big moment when General Sanford, who was in charge of the Air Force intelligence, held a press conference. He tried to clear things up by saying that what they saw was all because of temperature inversions, making it look like there were things in the sky that actually weren't there. But a lot of people didn't believe this explanation. Perry Barnes, who had a lot of experience controlling air traffic, didn't agree with the government and said it was too simple of an answer for such a complicated thing. Later on, secret papers would show that the whole weather explanation wasn't very solid. It was a story put together by the military, and the media and the public just went along with it without questioning much. But even with all the attempts to brush it off or deny it, the search for what really happened continues. It seems like the search is always going to be a bit like trying to catch shadows in the dark. Caught a glimpse of a mysterious air dance over Washington, D.C.? Join us as we dive into the enigma of vanishing objects. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more Unraveling Mysteries. Your thoughts might just light up our next adventure.